Well, we made tremendous progress last week. Uh, Zach and I hit a wall on Saturday night after over 120 hours of work on our wiring system. And we came to the conclusion we needed a few days to walk away because we had so much going on. I was hoping for a seven day a week, but we just got to the point on Saturday night that it was just pointless continuing because we were thinking in circles and sometimes you just need to stop have a day off. Got the lawns made yesterday, had like a, its own microclimate going on in the back lawn. And uh, and we got to this point, so pretty happy to get to this point. We've got the, got the panel where we can actually work on it. We've got it installed. We've got, this is the port side wiring. So if you want to, and this doesn't include uh, high loads like um, the winch and the power winches on the, uh, on the helm, or the helm, but they are the wires for the helm. We got to this point where we started to work out what was switched, what was unswitched, and we got our electrical compartment all pretty much set up and we've got a method. So Zach and I had this great conversation the other night over a few beers down at the brewery after we finished on Saturday night. And uh, we came to the conclusion I need to do some more glassing and work. So I'm gonna spend the next four days laminating flow coating around the engine rooms to make sure that we can then start to really pin stuff out and uh, and work out where the larger item got the hot water service and a water maker is going to fit. So certainly get those alternators converted and put in place as well so we can start to put in the regulators and the center fielder and the like. So where I'm gonna begin today is I'm gonna cut this access hatch. Now this may end up being a washboard it also may end up being a flip up lid on a piano hinge on the lid of the engine bay. So as this lifts up, I was planning to have this lift up underneath, but I'm considering whether I make it a washboard style. So I'm gonna cut this guy out here. That'll give me unabated access into the engine room from the front. And I'm also going to have engine room access from the back and also through the hatch. So three access points. Um, that's going to create a lot of insulation issues with regard to noise, fumes and the like because we obviously want as much as possible to have a sealed engine room. Um, but I'm going to cut this guy out now. That's going to allow me access right up underneath and, uh, and, and, and because the engines are in there, I'm going to have to then wrap them in a tarp hole and as I start to flow coat and the like. But that'll be my first job of the day. And then I'm going to start to continue on with this helm wiring cabinet that's going to be down in here. Now this helm wiring cabinet down in here, this area from here down is going to be completely wiring and looms and Balmar regulators on the walls. And, and obviously we need to really consider how we're going to address this because we don't want naughty hands going in here, little kids or adults shoving bags in there where we've got potentially very, very important wiring. And this is the whole helm station comes down these conduits here. So I'm gonna get this compartment in uh, and obviously that means I need to get the bed locked down. So underneath there all has to be tabbed, flow coated, locked down, and then the other panel is going to sit on top of that and be glassed to the bed itself. So there's a lot to happen here. Now you would have to look a very long way to find a 42 foot catamaran with engine access as good as that. Um, I've got top access from the hatch and now I've got front access and I always had this plan for all of this stuff down here including the impeller, the belt, the face and uh, you know, obviously uh, fuel filters and the like. And as I said, I've also got access through the back there. Now I may not need that and I was never gonna cut that hole until I had a really good look at this. I reckon I can get in there without too much trouble. Uh, even on a hot engine, I could probably still get into the back there. So I'm not gonna go and drastically cut out the bulkhead that I have for this area here until such time as I've really worked out whether or not I can just manage with it like this 
I do have to get to the back, obviously, because this isn't a sail drive, I do need to get into the back because it's a stern drive, and in fact, it was a sail drive, I need access to the back as well. But I think there's, you know, there's probably two feet of clearance there underneath the bed here for me to just be able to scale right in. I think uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm, it was a drastic cut, but it had to be done. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically tie the old module that I spent months on, these bloody engine modules. I'm gonna tie these back in and create a little lip here for this door to uh, to make a dam against and obviously a rebate for it to sit against. Uh, if, if it's a washboard, I'll obviously have a second one like a U-shaped channel running down here. Or if it's just simply a, a hinge down door, I just need a backing plate here that I can insulate and uh, stop any, obviously, any noise and fumes coming through. So yeah, pretty exciting to get this cut out. I need to laminate this together. So I'm gonna glue this bed down at some point, probably today, and glue it all the way down and finish out the insides. And I've got a heap of siphon vents, I've got hoses, I've got looms, I've got everything to come through into this area here. But yeah, look, pretty good to get that cut out. I'm gonna go and do the other side. All right, and then down into the uh, starboard side over here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I, I just now I've done that. I wish I'd done it bloody months ago because we got those alternators out a lot easier. But anyway, I'm gonna do this one. This one's gonna be slightly different because there's a little bit larger cabinet on this side. So they probably have a slightly smaller hatch than the one on the other side. Although I'm gonna try to match. I might actually bring the other one over and just use that as the template. Janet just tested out her new space and she's going to be able to get in to do an oil change. You right? <laughs> All right, so what's happening? We've come to the conclusion that we can't do any more work under this engine room, including putting wires, steering, conduits, engine looms and the like, until we glue this bed base down and get some flow coat onto this wall here in the hot water system so we're gonna to have to glue it down so I've got Janet in there and she's gonna to have to hold this up because it has to come in and slide in underneath this and connect with this bulkhead here to make the thing all solid and it's all gonna be tabbed and, and glass yeah we haven't got a lot of room because we've got this um walk through transom area here which is on the top here this actually is interfering with the amount of lift we've got so we're going to be putting technically or thick and epoxy along this cleat here that Janet laminated in quite a few months ago maybe six months ago and we're going to basically load that up with epoxy glue this down and then uh, i'll be able to come in and do another whole heap of tabbing underneath and on top of this this will be tabbed to the wall of the hull and uh and that obviously to the chamfer panel and uh, and then that'll be in and it'll never move again and never squeak look you know squeaking there's no squeaking in my boat. <laughs> Trying to protect our future guests here. <laughs> right, uh, so I'm thinking glue along here first, and Janet's going to just lift it up. So Janet can get it about oh, six inches, I only need a couple of millimetres in there to be able to get it all the way along there, and we'll slide it into place on here first. Just got to make sure we don't get any glue on these wires. They're all bagged, and we should be able to glue it in place on both sides here, and then if you hold it up just while I beat it out, and then once it's down, it's down. All right, so you're gonna lift up your end, lift it up now, and I'm gonna guide it in. Ready? Very unusual position here. Sorry? I'm doing my post-adjusted. I'm done here. What did you say? I said, do you mean my post-adjusted, you do it? 
<laughs> oh, they're going to sit on my motor. I don't think you'd be able to sit on a hot day after a big day of running. Can you just lift it up a touch? All right, we're going to do the starboard side now. So I'll do a massive job. Some days we just don't do anything and then all of a sudden we do a lot. <laughs> Feels like that, doesn't it? I was a bit, a bit overwhelmed last night, wasn't I? Got home and I'd really done nothing but a little bit of prep all day and uh, a couple of visitors froze me out. And then here I am, powering away again. Feel good. Hello, right, get in your hole. <laughs> Come on, don't get in there. Just watch that um, engine loom and you don't walk on it, please. Yeah, come on. Imagine if it's just done about six hours of steaming and you've got to get in there. Nice and cool in there, I'd imagine. <laughs> imagine getting in there on a tropical summer day with no wind and it's just been running for six hours. 150 degrees in there. I think I'm going to have to put a porthole in the end. Oh, shit. Careful. Um, got to be careful you don't catch your epoxy bag on a little dag of fiberglass because as you squeeze it, it comes out the back end. <laughs> That's happened to me where I've had been squeezed it out the front and it's coming out of my elbow. And uh, yeah, that's not good. Right, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Lift it up. And slot it in underneath. Now that that's glued down, I'm going to tab it in place. So the tabbing is not that easy, but as you can see here, I've got to, I'm going to put in two layers of 600 and tab the top to the bottom, so the chamfer panel to the underneath base. And then later on, I'm going to come back and I'm going to tab all the way along the, the sides to make sure that it's actually glued and taped in every aspect. Uh, we don't want any movement squeaking. This technically is a structural section of the back of the boat reinforcing that bulkhead there tying the whole thing in and particularly the engine bays there's a lot of weight here into the whole side so very very uh happy to get this part in it's a bit of a bugger doing that tabbing up under there though that's a prick of a job but anyway it won't be too big it's only gonna take me half an hour to do each side but it'd be nice to have it done because then i can start to think about actually cleaning up this and running you know, a couple of steering lines and uh, and wires down there for the autopilot and the such like that in the back. Sadly, summer is here. I've been um, lamenting the fact that I've been missing the sun, but now the sun's out and it's 28 degrees outside and it's disgusting in here. And uh, I picked the worst job I've done for a long time to do today and that's laminating underneath the engine bay beds and uh, underneath the beds in the bedroom there and you can see here I've got my cardboard looks like a coffin because that's what it feels like but I've been up under there all day on both sides I've now that Janet and I glued that in earlier we have completely laminated the entire underneath of this bed with two layers of 600 double bias and then tomorrow I'm going to come in and do the sides on the top right around and, uh, and fully integrate this into the boat now this will form a significant part of structure of this boat it's going to uh, basically stop any movement of the hull side here not that it's going to have any anyway after i put that last bulkhead in but i'll tell you now this is going to beef this up something fierce it'll make it strong as 
So I've just got one more piece to go in there. I'm putting in a 150mm uh, piece of 600 dollars Weiss and a 200 piece just to get a bit of an overlap up under that, up under there. And um, the worst part is about to be done because I've got to lay on my side with the uh, with the engine lip here that I left yesterday dug into my shoulder and uh, and it's causing me some grief. But yeah, hopefully once I'm finished, I'm going home. I've had enough. It's been a monstrous day. In preparation for tomorrow morning, I've had enough. I've just done so much today. Um, I'm just going to feed in a glue thickening um, mixture, which is basically polyester and cotton flock. It's amazing how strong this is. It's like solid glass. In fact, I've used a lot of it to do the inside of the window, the cooling of the windows here. I'm going to feed that in between the bed and the hull side so tomorrow morning when I come in I can simply get in, do a quick tab, both sides, and then it'll be finished. Basically uh, to have this complete engine bay roof on is a big win because now I can tidy up underneath. So this gap is about five millimeters and you don't want to just glass down into that although you'll create a u-shape you're better off having it solid and then put your tabbing on the top because underneath is now solid glass epoxy and then i have another tab and another fillet underneath it so it's pretty substantial i'll do the top as well to make sure there's absolutely no chance of anything ever tearing out of here there is no chance of anything ever tearing out of this boat i'll tell you i'm trying to get the weight down try to use fillers and things that um that will work as weight reduces i guess you're not just putting resin in you're actually lightening it with this uh, cotton flock and cabasil and the likes but the cotton flock's great because it's bulky and it doesn't cost too much but yeah i'll whack that in now and uh then we're aiming for this sort of a result in this room here you can sort of see it but it's still a little way off after a monumental week a couple of weeks ago uh zach and i are putting in the bones of our electrical system. He did a runner because we were exhausted and I didn't hear from him for the week because I had a lot of other things going on there. Moving to New Zealand at the end of the year to do a year's traveling in a camper van and uh, they've just purchased that from a fellow over in near Wellington in New Zealand. And uh, I went home on Thursday night and I've sat there having a drink with Janet and, and I said to her with a little tear in my eye, I hope he comes back. I hope he comes back in a couple of weeks to help me uh, complete some of the wiring and at least get the the next stage of it in because I think this is going to be done in multiple stages. So we've got about three or four months before they leave. Um, I'm going to be calling on him for a day every now and then now that we've done the real big thing. And then two seconds later, Zach gets on the phone and calls me. I mean, you just can't imagine how good that felt to have someone call and say, how yeah, about I come down and do another three days? I think he's actually quite enjoyed it. Not really sure we knew what we were up for here on um on the hulls with the electrical system I, I had a real bit of a feel it was going to be monumental it's even bigger than monumental at this stage we are currently at the level of seven thousand australian dollars worth of wire alone that's not including the victron system not including the switches lights anything the victron system is a totally separate item wire alone seven thousand australian dollars so you can fully expect this to cost a bomb but because we're doing it ourselves we're probably saving god knows a lot anyway zach's uh gonna come up and uh put in another three good days with me i'm really excited about that because we're gonna get a hell of a lot of stuff wired in at least ready to then hook up some devices and uh, my batteries are here pretty much got everything we need except for switches and light switches so um hopefully in about 10 minutes, he's going to be here. I'm going to be headlong into another three day, probably 10 to 12 hour days of just smashing this thing out. So he's come back for another round. I've done it again. <laughs> Why am I here? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Poor bugger. Rang me, rang me the other night when I was about to start crying and he <laughs> just saved me. So we're putting a battery protect. Mounted there. We're going to have another one on the other side for the switched and unswitched loads. We have. That switch there, that's going to be for the DC loads, and then there's going to be a grey uh, dual output, dual circuit, that goes there, which will be for the inverter. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, well, it's good. Good to have you back, mate. Yeah, good to be here. It was a nice week uh, for you to have a little bit of think. <laughs> a bit of a relax for both of us. Good on you, mate. Right, he's having a rethink. He's having a, it all again. having a rethink. He's doing some nice mods down here on our, this is our high load board. Yep. So yeah, we had to space it out. You got to allow for the crimping or the 
So you've got to allow for the uh, fact that these things don't bend. Yeah, and the terminals are that big, so you've got to factor in that length times two. Yep. And once you've got a short piece, they just really don't have much bend in them, so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing we've got to think about with this four aught wire we're using. I mean, really, there's not a lot of room in there, is there, mate? No, <laughs> it's filling up pretty quick. Yeah, what do you need? <laughs> Zach gave me some more homework. He said, bits and pumps. <laughs> that was easier said than done. Um, down in here, I've got a spot, a really nice little spot in there for uh, our water pumps, 22 litre a minute job. And uh, I've got it here in my hand, and it's a pretty nice big unit. The only thing is, <laughs> the hole's not big enough to get a drill or a screwdriver through it. So we had both of us down in here a minute ago, and uh, it was a bit tight, wasn't it, Zach? It's a bit tight, it's a bit tight for me. So, I am going back in. And we got it mounted and it started to wobble. So, I wasn't too happy with that either. So. Alright, a long time ago I put in some nice mounts in here, but I failed to factor in the fact that I wouldn't be able to screw them in, or drill them for that matter. <laughs> That's, uh, that's one of those things, isn't it? Access. Zach's having his own battles over there, but I'm having more battles because I don't know how I'm going to screw anything in here, Zach. I'll work it out. Yeah, you will. Right, so we've got our water pump in here in our shower, and I'm struggling to find a place for the macerator. This macerator, because we don't have gravity-fed tanks, it has to draw the, the waste out of the blackwater tank and then up through a vented loop and then out to sea through a seacock down on the inboard side of the boat. We want it on the inboard side so that all the waste will go down through the, the tunnel of the boat and out the back and not up over the side of the boat and spoil everybody's barbecue. Um, so I've come through a few areas where I can't fit it. <laughs> I've, I've put in mounts, but it's way too long to have it down here. It's way too long to have it down there. And uh, I think I'm gonna end up putting it here, underneath the shower here, so that I can action the vented loop and the, the waste tube. But yeah, it's, um, luckily I've got a spot that I can screw right through. Through here, there's a step that I put in that I'll be able to bolt it to this panel here and uh, and go for good clean lines around the back of the shower here so that this will stay relatively untainted with wires and hoses. Well, we hope so. There's a million wires in there now, isn't there, Zach? Yeah. Yep. So my plan is to mount it here. And it can be mounted sideways. Better off not mounted upside down. You certainly don't want it upside down, but it can be mounted sideways. It doesn't affect its performance. Um, ideally, you want them vertical, but this way... I'm not going to be able to do this and it's not like it's going to be pumping for hours it's just going to give it a quick pump three minutes and then it'll be done on a, probably on a daily basis whenever we're anchoring up but yes yeah, so i've got water pump macerator pump and there'll be another salt water pump in here somewhere for the toilets 